For profession of faith, public avowal of faith according to a traditional formula, see creed. The term religious profession is used in many Western Rite Christian denominations, including those of Roman Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, and other traditions, to refer to the solemn admission of men or women into a religious order by means of public vows. The term is defined in the 1983 Code of Canon Law of the Roman Catholic Church in relation to members of religious institutes as follows. By religious profession members make a public vow to observe the three evangelical councils. Through the ministry of the Church they are consecrated to God, and are incorporated into the institute, with the rights and duties defined by law. Canon law also recognizes public profession of the three evangelical councils on the part of Christians who live the Eremitic or Anchoritic life, without being members of a religious institute. A hermit is recognized in the law as one dedicated to God in a consecrated life if he or she publicly professes the three evangelical councils, confirmed by a vow or other sacred bond, in the hands of the diocesan bishop and observes his or her own plan of life under his direction. The three evangelical councils, which are considered in greater depth in the article about them, are those of chastity, poverty, and obedience. The Benedictine religious profession of stability, conversion of manners, and obedience. Though historically preceding the profession of the evangelical councils by several centuries, includes the three evangelical councils implicitly. Some orders add to the three evangelical councils special vows inspired by the purpose of their own founder see in particular the fourth vow unique to the Society of Jesus. Religious profession is often associated with the granting of a religious habit, which the newly professed receives, with or without ceremony, from the superior of the institute or from the bishop. Acceptance of the habit implies acceptance of the obligation of membership of the religious institute, including the vows of chastity, poverty and obedience. Religious profession can be temporary or perpetual. "'Temporary profession is to be made for the period defined by the institute's own law. This period may not be less than three years nor longer than six years. When the period of time for which the profession was made has been completed, a religious who freely asks, and is judged suitable, is to be admitted to a renewal of profession or to perpetual profession, otherwise, the religious is to leave." Conditions for making a temporary religious profession are a minimum age of 18 years, completion of a regular novitiate, freedom of choice on the part of the person making the profession, and acceptance by the superior after a vote by the superior's counsel. Additional conditions for making perpetual profession are a minimum age of 21 years and the completion of at least three years of temporary profession. The traditional distinction between simple and solemn vows is no longer taken into account for canonical effects. History the origins of religious profession date from the time when Christians were recognized in the Church as followers after perfection in the practice of religious life. We meet them in the 3rd century, under the name of ascetics, called in Greek asketai, and in Latin confessors. Eusebius of Caesarea Church History, 3, XXXVII, numbers among the ascetics the most illustrious pontiffs of the First Ages, Saint Clement of Rome, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, Saint Polycarp, and others. After these, in the 4th century, come the hermits and monks, followed in the 11th century by the canons regular, in the 13th century by the mendicant orders, in the 16th by the clerks regular, and lastly by the members of religious congregations. Profession for a long time was made by clothing with the religious habit, the aspirant could personally put on the habit or receive it, with or without ceremony, from the abbot or from the bishop. This clothing laid upon him the obligation of poverty and chastity more as a natural consequence of a donation or consecration to God than as arising from formal vows, which did not exist at that time cf. Saint Basil, Reguli Fugis Tractati Resp, ad 14 interrogat, in pg. 31, 949–52, the community life, established under Shenudi, the great disciple of Saint Pahomius, added an explicit promise of fidelity to certain precepts. Saint Benedict added an express promise of stability, and obedience to the superior. These last promises denoted obligations created in addition to those implied by taking the habit. The first formula, which expressly mentions poverty and chastity, is that of the Constitutions of Narbonne, promulgated in 1260 by Saint Bonaventure for the Friars Minor. 
Then the constitutions of the Minims and Clerks Regular expressly mention the three essential vows of the religious life, as well as those superadded on account of the special ends of their orders. This discipline is common to religious orders and congregations. Finally the Regulations of 1901, published in explanation of the present practice of the Holy See, do not permit in new congregations any but the three essential vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, in the decretal quad votum. UNIC. De Vito et Voti Redemption e. 15 in six degrees, Boniface VIII declared authoritatively that the vow of chastity, consecrated by the reception of major orders, or by religious profession in an approved institute, created a dirimant impediment to marriage. Some communities of tertiaries not belonging to an approved order were the first to introduce profession accompanied by simple vows, which is now the ordinary practice in the more recent congregations, the Annals of the Order of Saint Benedict. Volume I, p. 74 in the year 537 recognized among the Greeks three classes of religious, the novices, who wore the simple tunic, the perfect, clothed with the pallium, and the more perfect invested with the kukula, or hood attached to a short cloak, covering the shoulders, which was considered the special emblem of the religious life. In certain monasteries of the East, a distinction was made between persons wearing the short habit and those wearing the long habit a distinction against which St. Theodorus the Studite protested in his epistles I, e. P. X, in PG, XCIX, 941–2, and which is still found among the schismatic Coptic monks see Cathal. Mission in the 1st of October 1910, p. 7 SQQ. Saint Ignatius of Loyola laid down that in his order there should be a simple profession, followed by more or less frequent renewal of vows until such time as the candidate should be prepared for the solemn or definitive profession. This, under Pius IX and Leo XIII, has become the common law of all religious orders. References Further reading Topic. Dom Columba Marmion, Christ the Ideal of the Monk, ch. v. Monastic Profession, 